Chechen strongman Ramzan Kadyrov said he is in Ukraine and has threatened what he called Kiev Nazis, saying that he and his forces were about 20 kilometers away and are now even closer. Here are the details. Ramzan Kadyrov has said on Telegram that he has joined Russian forces in Ukraine and claims to be heading toward Nazis in Kiev. The comments appeared alongside a video of the Chechen leader discussing military tactics with a group of soldiers apparently taken March 13th at an airfield in the northwestern Kiev suburb of Hostomel. The airfield is now well known as the location of a fierce battle in the early days of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, with Russian forces first taking, then losing, then retaking the site. Though Kadyrov's video could not be verified, the Institute for the Study for War says Chechen forces are confirmed to be participating in Russian efforts to encircle Kyiv from the west. And, regardless of his veracity, it can be seen as an attempt to raise the morale of Chechen troops, who have reportedly suffered heavy losses in Ukraine in the wake of Kadyrov's very public commitments to the invasion. Over the course of the war, Kadyrov has directly threatened Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky more than once, writing on Telegram two weeks ago that his only chance was to relinquish power, according to Bulgarian news agency Novinite.com, and offering a $500,000 reward for the head of each commander of the Ukrainian nationalists, according to the Caucasian Knot site. However, the Kyiv Independent reported that a Chechen Special Forces column of tanks near Hostomel was destroyed on February 26, with Ukraine's Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council saying those killed were part of an elite Chechen unit sent to assassinate Zelensky. Of course, this does leave the third option of a man on a massive ego trip who has overpromised, talking big about assassinating people and now needs to somewhat justify that to himself after sending his own soldiers to die. His Telegram comments ended with him saying he would like to introduce the intriguing idea that his men may already even be in Kyiv, a warped level of playfulness that sounds more like a man engaged in a social media beef than a world leader helping to drive on an invasion in which civilians are being blown up. All options are on the table. Elsewhere, as the fighting continues in Ukraine, the Times of London reports that the Ukrainian military claims to have sunk the same Russian warship that attacked Ukraine's Snake Island at the beginning of the invasion. Snake Island became world-famous when a social media post claimed that its Ukrainian defenders told the attacking warship to go F itself before they were killed. The Times says the Ukrainian Navy laid a trap for the ship by setting up a Grad rocket launcher and hiding it under camouflage netting. Small boats were then used to lure the warship to a pre-targeted position. When the ship got close to the position, which was in the middle of the Grad's kill zone, the Grad opened up, sending dozens of rockets tipped with powerful warheads screaming out over the ocean. The Ukrainian military says at least one of the rockets hit the ship, causing a fire that later sank the ship. The news comes days after Ukraine sank its own flagship, a large frigate that was under repairs when the evasion started. The ship was scuttled to make sure the Russians couldn't capture and use it. The Russian war machine is designed to get air superiority by using its large fleet of attack jets to pound enemy radar and anti-aircraft installations into oblivion. Once it gets air superiority, its strategy is to use its large arsenal of tanks and armored personnel carriers to steamroll over the target country. The Associated Press reports that after two weeks of war, Russia is starting to lay siege to Ukrainian cities and pounding them with heavy artillery. The reason for this is partly because Ukrainian forces have been able to frustrate Russian war tactics by successfully deploying their limited number of expensive Western-made missile systems. Russia managed to gain air superiority early on by destroying large anti-aircraft and radar systems via airstrikes. However, it later had to hold back most of its large aircraft arsenal after many of its attack planes and helicopters were shut down by roving bands of soldiers firing man-pad missiles like the famous Stinger with lethal effect. Russia's other tactical focus, its large tank force, has also been blunted by small groups of Ukrainian troops using advanced anti-tank missiles like the Javelin and N-Law. These small infantry units have been able to stop large armored divisions in their tracks. Such tactics had trapped Russian armor in long static convoys where Ukrainian drones could bomb them from the air. One of the results of Ukraine's dogged defense is that many Russian war machines had to be abandoned on roads and fields because their supply trucks were blown up. This led to a large number of videos showing Ukrainian civilians using civilian methods to spirit the large war machines to secret locations. However, war analysts warn that, despite the fact that Ukrainian fighters have had many successes and inflicted many losses on Russian forces, it is far too soon to say that Russia is losing the war. Analysts believe it is still very early in the conflict, and Russia still has large forces at its disposal. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.